Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and the next episode of Conspiracy Theory. We have looked at corruption, controversy, and well, conspiracies. But what about a conspiracy involving murder, drug smuggling, and a missing person of interest to the FBI? This is the story of John Paul Sr. His racing career, his success, and eventually his criminal activities, the mystery surrounding the disappearance of his two wives and his eventual disappearance from the face of the earth. What happened to John Paul? This is what we are looking at in today's episode of Conspiracy Theory. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and with that, let's jump into the video. John Lee Paul Sr. was actually born Johann Lindert Paul in the Netherlands and immigrated in the mid-50s with his family to Indiana. He was an intelligent man getting a master's in business from Harvard and making a fortune as a successful mutual fund manager. And once he had a lot of money, he did the sensible thing and went racing. Racing at the club level in America for several years before taking a brief break after separating from his first wife and travelling in his sailboat. Another passion of his that will be important later. He returned to racing in the mid-70s and even started to find some success, competing in the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1978 for Dick Barber Racing in a Porsche 93577A, alongside Dick Barber himself and former Formula 1 driver Brian Redman. The trio would finish 5th overall and 1st in class. John Paul would follow that with a Trans Am title in 1979. In 1980 he began teaming with his son, John Paul Jr, obviously named after his father like every good megalomaniac. The pair would win in the IMSA Camel GT Series in 1980 on John Paul Jr.'s debut at, at Lime Rock Park on the same day that John Paul Sr. married his second wife, Chalice, on the infield before the race. A good day for the John Pauls win. They would take another win at Road America and John Paul Sr. would finish second in class in the overall standings whilst also winning the 1980s World Endurance for Drivers Championship. John Paul Sr. ran his own team, running a modified Porsche 935 under the banner of JLP Racing. Wins in the 12 hours of Sebring and 24 hours of Daytona would follow, as well as another couple of top 10 drives in the 24 hours of Le Mans. But it was during his racing career that his extreme personality became of note. Race stewards noted that John Paul Sr. would often have tantrums and that he was terrifying, throwing things across the room and even screaming at his own son over minor disagreements. It was well noted that John Paul Sr. was not a nice person, but that was just scraping the surface as it would turn out. He remained with second wife Chalice for less than a year before they split up. She was supposed to be an extra on a Burt Reynolds film, but John Paul invited her to Florida before filming began and she was never seen again. Despite being a suspect, it doesn't look like John Paul was ever arrested for the suspected crime. What he was eventually arrested for was the attempted murder of a business partner who had apparently spilled the beans of John Paul's drug smuggling ring to the police. John Paul shot him three times in 1983, but the man survived and John Paul fled to Switzerland. In 1985, he was arrested by Swiss police for using a fake passport and sent back to America, where he was sentenced to 25 years in prison. His son was also part of the drug smuggling operation and received five years in prison for racketeering. Given that he once admitted to being intimidated by his father and his own grandfather was also being involved, I do feel a little bit sorry for John Paul Jr., although he would only serve 18 months in prison. John Paul Sr. tried to escape from prison in 1987 but was captured before climbing a fence. He served 13 years in prison before being paroled in 1999. He had previously been married three times with a very brief marriage to Jeanette Haywood, the sister of fellow racer Harris Hurley Haywood, before his prison sentence. After leaving prison in 1999 and still on parole, John Paul Sr. met and fell in love with Colleen Wood. This is the second woman who would disappear whilst in a relationship with John Paul Sr. Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries. A Florida woman meets a man of her dreams. Soon they chart a life together sailing around the world. But suddenly she vanishes. Could her boyfriend have had anything to do with her disappearance? Soon after they got together, John Paul convinced Colleen Wood to join him on a five-year sailing trip around the world. Something that was a lifelong ambition for Colleen Wood. 
She contacted her son in early December 2000 to let him know they'd be departing shortly. At some point in mid-December, she disappeared forever, just like his second wife, Chalice. When asked about it by police, John Paul said they had broken up after an argument and Colleen had left, returning later with two other men to collect her belongings and he never saw her again. Colleen's family didn't raise a missing persons report with the police until May 2001 after learning about John Paul's troubling past. John Paul was interrogated again around this time, but he was not arrested. He fled America sometime in the summer of 2001 on his boat, breaking the terms of his parole and would never be captured by police. Around this time, $35,000 were removed from Colleen's bank account, not by her, but by two women who were instructed to do so by a man fitting John Paul's description, with them keeping a share. Despite being recognised in places like Jamaica and Fiji, even ports in Europe, he was never arrested and is not known to have ever returned to the United States. He remains a person of interest in both cases, but given he would now be 84 years old, it is highly likely he is dead. It's not impossible he is still alive, but given a stressful life of running from the police, sailing the world and drug trafficking, it seems unlikely. The trail goes cold after 2011 when he sold his boat in Italy. He could still be out there somewhere. So we may never know the fate of John Paul Sr. Technically, we do not know the fate of the two missing women either, but unless coincidence plays a huge role in this, the likelihood is they're dead. Sadly, they may not be the only ones. A former business partner, David Casola, also disappeared, never to be seen again, and John Paul is a suspect in that case also. It's unbelievable to me that he was never arrested, but with no physical evidence and no bodies, nothing was ever stuck to him. He was either a very skilled or very lucky murderer, or an unfortunate bystander who just happened to be linked with so many murders. Given his criminal past, that was obviously a family-run business given his father's involvement, there may be other bodies, people who were killed by John Paul Sr., but went unnoticed. <laughs> I sure thank God for being here. I like to say hello to my father. I love you. John Paul Jr. passed away at the age of 60. Like his father, he was clearly a talented race driver, and if his prison sentence hadn't gotten in the way, he might have had a decent career. He returned to racing and even took a win in IndyCar in 1998, finishing in the top 10 in the Indy 500 that same year. He also won a kart series race, finished second overall at Le Mans in 1984, and took a second win in the Daytona 24 Hours in 1997. He retired from racing in 2001 after being diagnosed with Huntington's disease, passing away in 2020. His father was not at his funeral, unless he was there in a shady looking trench coat. So that is the sad story of Chalice Alfred Barnett and Colleen Wood, two potential victims of John Paul Sr. Drug smuggler, wanted for questioning in regards to multiple disappearances and of course racing driver. After a successful career in motorsport came to an end in 1982, John Paul Sr. would spend the rest of his life in trouble with the law or on the run. We will probably never know what happened to him. Hopefully one day his victims can be found and their families can get some peace. So this one was kind of a downer. I have really skimmed over a lot of information in this one. There is a lot and a lot of it is very speculative. For more information check out chalicepool.com or watch his episode of Unsolved Mystery or some of the podcasts that have featured this story. Make sure you leave your thoughts and comments below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and have a good one.